Hey, I'm the Calphone Gamer, and this is The Road of the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Pro Cycling Manager 2018. It's Career Mode Episode 58. Now, if you're looking for new content on Pro Cycling Manager 2019, look no further. This channel is the right place for you, but this is still Pro Cycling Manager 2018. I am still ke keeping this career mode going, but I will have a 2019 career mode, so look for those episodes, and a 2019 Pro Cyclist mode. So three series active all at once with Pro Cycling Manager content, including this ongoing series in the career mode of 2018. With that in mind, Here's where we are at now. It's the 16th of August. We have the Arctic Race of Norway and the Colorado Classic going on at the same time. Now, for the Norway race, we have yeah, what's pretty much a sprint stage. They say these are Category 1 and Category 2 climbs, but yeah, not really. Stage two, definitely a sprint stage. Stage three, well, there's a punchy hill climber stage at the end of that one, so that will definitely leave some people behind. And finally, stage four, sprint stage, but again, you can see there's some punchy little climbs at the end of that, and you could have a, a solo uh, or small group of riders who get away at the end of that one. The Arctic Race of Norway, though, I'm going to go ahead and do that one off-camera, but we'll talk about the results as we work our way through the Colorado Classic, uh, which has sprint, time trial, small group sprint, and completely flat hill stage. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to mostly come down to the time trial on this one and you can see that BMC absolutely ran away with this one a year ago. Cease Bowl took eighth place with a decent time trial but Stephen Kuhn, Brandon McNulty, Damiano Caruso with TJ Van Garderen winning it last season. I tried to sign Brandon McNulty just couldn't quite afford him. I'm hoping a year from now we can afford the likes of a Brandon, Brandon McNulty to bring him into the team. It would be great if we can get like a Michael Woods, but don't see that one happening. Uh, so we'll move through the Colorado Classic, and like I said, off camera, the Arctic Race of Norway, and then we'll have the Deutschland Tour after that, and that is a two-star objective, but the objectives mean nothing at this point as we've already locked in our new sponsor for next season. I did a very, very bad thing for a very, very good reason. There was a crash. Then Ginnikin and Swerble were caught in that crash. A lot of contenders were caught in that crash. And we were close enough to the finish that instead of sitting up and, and doing the right thing uh, and, and waiting for the group to catch us, I pushed on. Uh, I used up Bax and he's been dropped and He's now in the group with Van Ginnikin. I am now in a group of eight. Four of those eight are my guys. We have 2.6 kilometers till the end. Now, there was a lot more in the group. Uh, we had close to 30, but we've left a lot of riders behind with the tempo, with that final climb. The finish line is uphill, so I don't want to attack immediately. But Osorio has been the lead-out guy. He got us up and over the hill. He is so close to being out of energy uh, and he's actually kind of the favorite for the overall so at this point I'd like to start bringing Marini forward and have Osorio uh, grab on to the back now uh, we're gonna push Marini at we'll say a 98 and then Osorio's going to grab on to the back of Gouillard so I've got Marini and Gouillard for the sprint 
I like our chances today. We've got the strong laid out. My guys are barely hanging on. Maybe they're going to barely hang on. And we'll see. But marini has got to get a good lead out here. And now he can go 99. Go 99. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. The yard. Sprint. Oh, 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 wow. That is kind of steep on the uphill. Do I want a full sprint yet? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. The strong men are giving their all. There's the cup. Uh, Gooyard, Gooyard, Gooyard. Nope, he's going to run out of energy. He's going to run out of energy before the end. He's just not quite strong enough. Everybody's out of energy here. Uh, Grosu, Aberasturi, Nathan Haas, Gooyard takes fourth, Prades, Marini, Van Hemlen, and Asorio. But that's your top eight with, well, Asorio, not so much. Asorio lost time there. That's sad even though we tried to grab on and, and leave him with a little bit, but he lose a little bit of time there. But the beautiful thing is Simon Yates and others are going to be well off the pace, a lot of time lost. We got Diego Ulysses in ninth. Oliveira in 16th. Pete Keniak, 18th. The tail -enders are still coming Simon in. Spielak. But... Lots and lots of contenders lost pretty big chunks of time here. So, I wasn't planning on showing this race, but I had to give you that sit rep and, and show you the end of that. Uh, that worked out for us. 23 kilometers left in the first stage here in Vail, Colorado. It's technically a sprint stage, but it's not really a sprint as Sealander tries to uh, take off and go for the solo victory. There's still a breakaway man, but he's all alone. Sealander trying to bridge that gap or go off on his own. Uh, so 22k, I should be forming up now, and I will. However, I, it's not really time to go anywhere just yet. The uh, reason for that is I've got to protect a couple riders. Uh, Verveki, for sure. Uh, it's, he's on a wonderful plus four, and having him available is good. Conchi is really our hope as the time trial guy, and so they'll they'll go to the back. In the back, meaning Veldeman and Bull. Now Veldeman's on a plus three and looking pretty dang strong for the sprint, so Bull will lead him out. And he's a better hill climber anyway, and it is a hilltop finish. Uh, but that leaves me with just three leadout guys, and they're actually all in really good shape here, so they could do well. Now, the best climber is Simpson, but Simpson's ill, uh, but we'll give it to him anyway. And then Wachtendorf's on a plus one. Garrison's ill, so we'll have Garrison go to the front. And we're going to start pushing Garrison, but only lightly. We just want to kind of keep position and be rolling at our pace. There's the two riders. They're about to be reeled in. Wolf is being reeled in. Sealander is... Yeah, there you go. We got him. 87. I'm not looking to be at the front right now. But as soon as we go over the top, that's where we want to start to push. Or just before it, actually. The riders have upped the pace. You can see Garrison's pace is doing just a little bit of damage behind him. I'm going to use Garrison's gel here. 16 kilometers left now. Okay, 90. It's not flat yet, but it's leveling off quite a bit. Though the others are kind of recovering anyway. 15k. Now we're definitely over the top, starting to go downhill. Right. Now we're pushing down, so Garrison's going to attack hard, 13k. And this just split the field, just like that. The guy's lagging behind over the top. Here we go, Garrison, that was a great lead out. Now 12 kilometers, a lot of this is going to be downhill, so we're going to keep pushing. So Vokhtendorf take it over now. More splits behind us. Not a huge gap, but a gap at this point is enough with just 10k. 
at a team going flat out. I've got to remember that uh, I'm actually not quite. Let's see, Garrison, can you actually. Where are you? Oh, he's still right there. Uh, get behind Simpson. Get back in this fold here. The teammates of the main yeah. Are not handing out nice. For a breakaway, so the that downhill allowed him to recover a little bit. Okay, Vachtendorf done. Simpson. Vachtendorf's not going to come back, especially now that we're at the base. But it's nice that we're going to get a little bit extra back from uh, Garrison. Okay, now a 99 isn't necessarily called for with 6.5 kilometers uh, as we're going to go uphill. It's just going to do too too much damage to the entire field. So Simpson's going to push 97 here, 5k to go. There are just 5 kilometers left. Garrison, his second go. 4k left. Let's get bowl ready here in just a moment. There we go. Now we'll get bowl ready. Okay. Little early for bowl. So I'm not going to go 99. Let's go 97. Veldman's the guy he's trying to lead out. Down to 2.5k. 2k. This is allowing somebody to get up beside us. Use their gel. Should have done that about a one kilometer ago. Uh, too soon. So we're not going to sprint yet. Feldman. There we go. The on his own. The up. Other teams already attacking, but they're out of energy too early. I I don't want to go into. Uh, oh, it's only 0.9. Okay, yeah, go. Go, go. All right, Veldeman. Come on, come on. Get up there. Get up there. Veldeman into the top three. He's not going to win, but he's going to take second. Vim Veldeman into second place. Verveki takes sixth. Conchi takes eighth. So we did what we needed to do. We got our top guys, our contenders up there. Bowl might have taken eighth place overall last season, but I don't think he's going to be in that strong of a position this year. Is there going to be a split? It's hard to tell. There are random writers all over the place now. There could be gaps. I mean, it's been two minutes already. 2.30 already. Now we've definitely got gaps, but were there gaps in front of that? We'll see if they bring all of those guys together. Remember, technically, this was a sprint stage. We'll see here in a moment how they classified all of this. Cease Bull was in the top 20, by the way. Feldman's going to pick up some bonus seconds. Yeah, no time gaps at the front. No time gaps into the middle. Now, we're already looking at guys that were a minute and a half down. We're looking at guys that were two minutes down. <laughs> the entire field ended up on the same time, except for the last five riders. That was... Uh, these guys were over three minutes down. I mean, the, this is the group that was 3.30. There was big, significant... Well, there were minor gaps to the group's 2.30. But then it was just random. One rider, one rider, two riders, three riders, four riders... It was spread out all over, I mean, over a three-minute stretch through those 123 riders. And they couldn't pick out a single time gap in there. Okay, so Nikki Terpstra extending with EF, Dan Martin, Mitchelton Scott, Van, Sepp Van Mark going to Kaha Rural. That's going to create a potential push for... Uh, for a bid to get into the World Tour. Quick Step takes another top rider, Tish Benut. Sam Bennett going to Vital Concept. And Richard Carapaz going to AG2R. Uh, for the Arctic of 
Race of Norway, there were lots of time gaps in that one. We'll move on to stage number two of that off camera and stage two of the Tour of Colorado. Stage two, Tour of Colorado. Time trial. We ride on board with Simpson. Vachtendorf's going to be out on track here in just a moment as well. You can see it is uphill towards the end. We're going to try a 72 first and foremost, but we need to save some energy. And at this moment in time, it doesn't look like that's actually happening. So uh, we're going to back off, try a 70, and see how that does uh, so that we can push a little more, handle a little more pressure on the climb. Simpson already only... Um, 66 on time trial and he's also a minus two race take condition so he is struggling a bit now 70 is definitely banking some energy and so we'll try to step that back up now that he's climbing we'll see if a 72 works i don't mind going to 70 on the flat and losing 10 15 seconds if we can then gain it back on the climb and then so it's a lot more time to be had on the climb than there is Uh, so stage two in Norway, well, it was a sprint stage, and it was mostly flat, mostly, there's a couple category two climbs, and Osorio, who's struggled a little bit uh, in the previous stage towards the end and dropped off. Simpson just 34 seconds down in 13th, and you can see he's still got a little bit of it, well, but it's just gotten tougher, so we'll see. I think a 72 might be right where he should be. Asorio, I went on the attack. Uh, early on, the, the breakaway group was not well established and not given freedom. There are still teams fighting to get in there, and so the breakaway only had pretty small margin and see that 72 now is running out of energy pretty quick so the 70 is actually probably the way to stick with it here as it looks like we're about to go into a deficit here even just on that 70 so Garrison will try to just keep at 70 and see how that one does Coming up on the 1K banner, we've nearly caught Hughes, and however to, however you say his name, I'm guessing that's a French-Canadian, so Bernier is Quierdo, like a Spanish-French. Come on, Simpson. Push it to the end. His little hill climb's a little bit stronger than theirs. Ninth place, minute eight down. That's not too bad. Vachtendorf coming up towards the line. He was 38th at the first check. Oh, he's already out of energy. Ouch. That's going to be a slow run in towards the finish. But we'll keep Garrison at 70 and see how that goes. I'm going to speed him up, though. As we go along, it'll be a quiet period here. So... Lots of energy in the bank. He's just 43 seconds down on that time. And we'll see how that consumption goes here over time without upping it. Let's see if he keeps enough energy till the end. And yes, it looks like he will. So now he can actually attack to the end. And that puts him in fourth place just 40 seconds down. He quickly drops to sixth, but still, that was the way to go. So Bull, sees Bull out on track. He is 21st overall, just 10 seconds down on the lead. And we'll keep him at a 70 and see how it goes. Kanchi, Verveki, Veldman, all will be out soon. And we'll slow it down to times two as Get these guys set and ready to go. So Conchi on the 70. This is our strong time trialist, so I actually think he could push a little harder. We'll go 71 for him. 
Ravetti, terrible time trialist, so not much hope there. I think Feldman's also a decent one, so we might push him to a 71. Patrick Bevan goes fastest. Uh, anyway, so Osorio picked up all the points at the second climb of the day, which was a Category 2 climb because of the way things were going, and I just decided to go for it and attack it. He is second in the Mountain Climbers competition as of right now. And then it was a relatively straightforward sprint finish, but coming up on that finish, well, it wasn't entirely straightforward as Bull on the climb here. Bull was a minute 19 down at the first check, so this is not the type of time trial to suit him. Coming up on the 1k banner, and he is definitely using that energy up quick. Veldeman, we're going to push him at a 71. Okay, Bull, we're going to start to speed up here towards the finish. just before the line slowed up a little bit two minutes down at the finish here's Conchi passing downing so he's looking good on that front and he's coming up on Balcom Malama quickly wow Malama off the pace here at the finish right now Patrick Bevan on top Taylor Eisenhart second fastest that's one of the writers I've been looking into to bring to our team but not happening next season Martinez, there's Caruso, Mannion. By the way, I found out in the Norway race, as I still haven't gotten to the finish of the second stage, but Simon Yates was one of the withdrawn riders from the crash in stage number one. So no Simon Yates. So I actually like our chances on that one. As Kachi is going to attack here full blown to the finish line. He was third at the first check and he's now got the best time by 24 seconds over Balco Malma. And here is Vervecki in pretty good shape with 1k to go. Also we're going to push 74 there. Feldman also making nice time here. He's about to pass Fritz. So this could work out in our favor if Conchi can hang on to that. He's got a comfortable lead right now. Dylan Toynes is third fastest for Fecky. Attacking the end a little bit. Ninth, a minute 39. Wow. A minute 39 is ninth place right now. Ultimate, I might have attacked too early there. Let's go back down to a 71 here. He is second place, four seconds down after the first stage. Anyway, the sprint finish of stage two we got somebody on the podium, and we came literally as close as you can. Photo finish, second place for Marini. Uh, Guyard, there was a little uphill section, and it just it took too much out of Guyard, so Guyard never could quite get into it. And we were well down the field, actually, uh, at that point, as Veldman actually running out of energy here. He's not going to be able to attack the final... Yeah, he just ran out of energy just before the final, so he couldn't attack it hard. But he was still in good enough shape to get fourth place a minute 10 down. And here is the last... No, this was Fritz, who was in third. He's in 70th. Here's Leanhard. And he's not going to put up anything. So yes, Conchi has won the stage and should put on the leader's jersey. Balco Malama will be in second. Dylan Toynes in third. And Veldeman in fourth place. And that should be your order at the top of the field. For Vecchi in 10th as well, so that will give me three riders in the top 10 overall. So Nicola Conchi with a fantastic performance there will move into the race leader's jersey after that excellent time trial. Over the likes of Balcom Olima, who's not known as a great time trialist, but is a great rider, and you'd figure somebody of that quality should be above these guys. Same with Dylan Toynes, but they're not. They're behind us. Even Patrick Bevan, Eisenhart, those guys are well above my level. So 
Uh, we punched well above our weight today. And it did well. So it is that order, essentially, at the front. And Conchi actually leading the mountain climber's jersey uh, after winning that time trial. It was technically a, a mountain top finish. Feldman in the points jersey leader. Conchi one point behind him. Young Ryder, Conchi, and team. That's all us. We are all over that podium. We were celebrating a decathlon gamer racing today. So, yeah, all of these guys in the top order, the top 16, entirely based on the time trial. Now we're going to head into uh, stage number three after that. So, Marini lost by millimeters. Auto photo finish, and he was coming and coming hard. That guy was out of energy, uh, but he had a really fantastic lead out, was out way ahead of us. I did not go too early on the sprint. Other teams did, and they burst past me, and they got way past me, and then there was all sorts of traffic. I sprinted at the right time, had the right amount of energy. Marini got there. Uh, Guillard couldn't get through the traffic, but we did well. Stage 3, Arctic Race of Norway. This is going to favor Osorio a lot more. Swerble. Uh, but there are some big names here. It's going to be tough for us to uh, keep pace with them a bit. But I'll do that one off camera, and uh, we'll see you for Stage 3 in Colorado. Hey, I'm in Norway. It's Stage 3. I know I said I wasn't going to show this, but the ending... Could be, should be good on this one. Uh, Marini might be third overall, but he's got no chance of getting near the top of this, especially with the minus four race day condition he had. So he's going first, and he was my lead out guy, and he was, he lasted one kilometer uh, at a 90. So, like I said, he was not going to make it to the top of this one. So Bax is the one leading us out now. We've got the entire peloton minus one rider together here as we go to attack the end on this one. So the real guy we're working for is Osorio. He's the favorite. He should get to the top at the front. It's not that steep. Five kilometers, just 266 meters of climbing, just 4.8%. This is not that intense. Osorio, though, only 9th, 54 seconds down. Ben Hemlin is 7th, 12 seconds down. And Guyard is in 6th, 12 seconds down. So these guys are just trying to tag along, see if they can survive. Swerble, the stronger climber, but he's 7 minutes behind. And he was caught up in that crash, stage 1, and got left behind. So, Bax, running lead out. Van Ginniken, a decent hills guy, running lead out. Beyond that, Swerble and Osorio trying to get to the top. And it's just 5.4 kilometers, and it's not that steep. So, backs, we're going to push. Not doing any damage to anybody else in the field right now, at least for us. And it's already down to 4K. We're going to go 95 now, and he's going to start pushing it. And Ginnikin. Gonna go a 96. Gonna get Swerve already. Now we're starting to do a little bit of damage to the rest of the field, and here come the real attacks. And he moves on to the attack. It could be decisive. 97. Swerve. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody else, use your gel. Swerve giving us a strong lead out. Osorio in a good position still. Van Hemlin and Guyard not making it. They're going to drop back. Couldn't keep up. There's the finish. Right there. But Osorio, not a lot left here. The pace is so high that a few riders are going to be very sore at the end of the day. 1K. Osorio, we're going to go over the top in this it's little flat section. Trying to get him enough to get to the end here. And sprint. This is actually just like that Category 2 climb we went for. So we're going to get a stage win here out of Osorio. Alejandro Osorio for the victory. 
Looks like we got a small group here. There is a split. Gorka Izagira, second. Patrick Codrad, third. Ben O'Connor, Rafael Micah, Roman Kreutziger, Diego Ulissi. He just beat all those guys. Our new player, Chris Hamilton, in ninth. King and Swerble takes 12th. Van Emlen in 14th. There's Van Gittiken, hangs on. There's a split. We'll see if they actually give a split there. Small split right behind Van Ginneken after those top 24. We'll see if they have 124 riders all coming in together three and a half minutes apart. There's a definite split right there. Those guys guaranteed. But are they going to have 120 riders spread out over three and a half minutes on what is clearly a hilltop finish? Or will they take? There was really only one clear gap in there, possibly two gaps in there. So we'll see if those 120 riders are in one, two, or three groupings on timing. But either way, that is a stage win for Alejandro Osorio. And here are a few of the key moments. I would have liked Swerble to survive a little bit longer on his lead out. Forced Osorio to still have a a bit too much work left to do on that one especially with the quality of riders around him and yet somehow he did it he got there first the lead out helped he was at the front those guys burned a lot of energy to get up beside him and then he was able to attack from there with not as much energy used up so they they had enough to push but not, not to attack he had enough to push and then attack in the final 200 meters. Same time for the first group, but I expected around 24. There was there was a time gap after 24. Chavez, Esteban Chavez in 25th. What is wrong with you, dude? How did you get dropped? Weak sauce. And then another grouping behind him at 26. So the first group was split. Looks like that second group, oh, there it is. There's that third group, and it was Guillard who came across first there, and actually even a fourth group. And okay, from there they just started doing random timings. There's that last one. I was saying it was right around 124, it was 121. But that's where the big, 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 big gap was. But they split the back group up into many smaller groupings. And we did, we got those groupings. So, how is it looking now? Remember, stage one, I gained a bit of an advantage here for Norway. And Krosus still leading. Really? Well, Osorio was ninth place. He had lost some time, so his time, 10 second time bonus. And apparently those guys hung in there. So we, we are fourth with Van Hamlin. Now fifth with the Osorio. Huh, okay. Okay, well. Uh, and of course, Van Ginneken, Van Ginneken kinda hung on, so he's 23rd, minute 49 down. Okay, so that's how it's shaken out at this point. Hey, we got a guy in fourth and fifth, though. That is really good, especially considering we are facing quite a few top riders out there. I mean, Gorka Izagira, he's only 11th. Conrad, 12th. Kreutziger, O'Connor, Keniak are all down the order a little bit. Remember, we had that weird ending to stage one, and these guys, yeah, 70 on hills, 72 on hills. And Nathan Haas, pretty, pretty decent rider right there. No wonder they hit, they hung in. And then of course you get you know Ulysses, or Askin, those guys. No, no surprise that they are up there. Top two, only slightly surprising, but when you see their their hill marks, you can see how they hung in with that front group. Uh, Hershey extending with EF. Ian Garrison. 
Apparently his virus is stubborn. Maybe I should uh, retire him on that f fourth stage there. But we'll move into uh, back into Colorado. 15 kilometers left in this one. And back a little earlier than I expected. I was going to come back at about 12. But uh, this breakaway group of seven riders still away. They've got a minute 17. There's a good chance they're not going to be caught. Uh, but we'll do our best. This was not a sprint stage. This is definitely a climbing stage, and there was a lot of damage. But the climbs were early enough in the stage that even though we have a peloton of just 78 riders, uh, well, that's still 78 riders. A lot of guys are tired. We did a lot of rotation. My team leaders actually did work protecting other riders for good chunks of this as we kind of rotated through at various phases. So... Uh, we're going to set these guys up. Conchi, of course, is the leader, and Vervecki is 10th overall. Uh, so we'll put Conchi following closest. And that will be Veldman, who will be that top sprinter. And even though he's not that great of a sprinter... Uh, no, actually, hold on. Let's let's do it this way. We're going to make it Bull, and then Bull will follow Veldman. Veldman... Uh, we'll save a li just a little bit because he's fourth overall. So Veldman will be the lead out guy, but he's going to just save that last little bit to try to make sure he, he stays in the group. Uh, Simpson's already been dropped. He's one of the many riders off the back. 78 still a pretty big number. And you can see that uh, there's not much here in terms of um, work rate left. So Wachtendorf... Actually, still not even able to do anything, but he's already up front, so that's that's good news. And he's actually recovering a little bit on this downhill, but it's all these little uphill, punchy ones that uh, keep breaking in the group. So we'll go in 92 here with Wachtendorf and pull these guys out here. The breakaway group is splitting apart, so maybe we will catch some or all of them as Wachtendorf is out of energy. Garrison now leading the way. Vervecki, what's going on? Why are you way off the pace there? 9.5. And yeah, we're still a minute and a half down. We're actually not even gaining right now. Toins, Malama trying to attack. Okay, so really this is what we're protecting now is these guys going off and getting something out of this away from me. So it's now less about the sprint and more about protecting the overall, and it looks like we've done that. And now that they've wasted a lot of energy, I actually kind of want to keep up the attack here. So Bull is no longer sprinting. For the sake of a sprint. This is now an... Oh, oh, Veldeman, grab on to the back, please. I used up more than I wanted to. He has recovered enough. Oh, we've caught these guys, too. Holy cow. Uh, and he moves on you to should yell. It could be decisive. It's 1.2. We're a little too far out still. A little too far out still. And now, sprint, sprint, sprint. Yeah, we, we lost the sprint in trying to protect the overall race, which we have done. So that's fine. And were those guys in the break? Were they among the break? I mean, we caught it. But I want to say those three guys were actually in it. But we did what we needed to do to protect the jersey, and that mattered a lot more. Uh, two groups split apart. That's actually going to separate times even further, for some anyway. And I got my guys that were all in the top part of the standings, those th three riders that were up there in the top ten, all finished in the front group. So that is the important part. Cease Bull, who I wanted to contend the sprint with, yeah, whatever. He got 17th. Don't care. We've got the jersey. That's what matters. We'll see how that 
affected the standings here before we jump into the final stage. And here are the race highlights that we've selected for you. So, Conchi still on top. Veldeman in fourth place. Is he in fifth? No, he was in fourth already. And Vervecki stays in tenth. So, no change in the top ten. There are definitely changes down the order, though. See so Spole, 35th. Garrison was higher up the standings, but he dropped down. He lost time in that one. Same time to the top 55 riders. And then about a minute down, Garrison in that group that followed. We're still in a good position and looking likely that we could could possibly win the uh, Colorado Classic here. 16 kilometers left here. Final stage, Tour of Colorado. We are in Denver, downtown Denver, Colorado. We're going to set up our sprint train here in just a moment and get things on the move right as we're about to reel in the breakaway group. Everyone's going to sit up just a little bit and we'll be the ones to take over the reins here with 13.8 kilometers to go. Now, as I set this up, quick recap of the final stage in the Tour of Norway. So, here, Conchi, the leader, he's the protected man. Veldeman also. And I'm going to put Conchi, well, and Vervecki. See, I want to protect all of them. So, you guys go on the back. Veldeman, the sprinter, is going to go up closer to the actual sprinter, which is Cease Bowl. He doesn't have much support. But we'll try to get a lead out from Vachtendorf and Garrison. And then Simpson on the front. Now, 13.8. Not quite time to go much of anywhere yet. At least not too strongly. So Simpson just kind of ride out casually and get established near the front anyway. Try to last as long as he can there. So, final stage. Basically a sprint stage, but not completely a sprint stage. In that one there was a bit of a punchy climb just five kilometers before the finish. Short but pretty steep and it was a climb that we had hit five six times in the final 25-30k. So it was worthy of doing some damage and we're actually down to seven and a half K here so we can attack a bit harder. Dylan Toy's trying to attack now so uh, Simpson gonna turn it on here. We gotta try to pull him and Canty back. Garrison going now. Simpson got us a lot of kilometers there. Okay, we've just about got him reeled in. I'm going to slow down a little bit just so Vachtendorf can go a little bit longer. He is that lead out guy who's got to get us to the end. We're going to go 98. Hold on, hold on, everybody gel. There we go. Okay, now we can go 99. Almost there. Nope, oh, back to 98. 98. 97. Need a little bit longer from you. Not full sprint yet. Okay, now we can just full sprint. Bull, a little too tired for this one. He's got the, he's got it, he's got it. We're gonna attack, we're gonna attack. Now back to sprint. Ah, oh, he ran out just before the end. Third place. Ah, uh, it's okay. Feldman fifth. Conchi eighteenth for Vecchi twentieth. They dragged a little bit behind. Uh, but they did good. Feldeman could have sprinted a little bit more. 
he's a decent sprinter, and that's why he he was able to uh, tag on, catch on to the back. Anyway, punchy climb, difficulty getting over it, small group for the finish, and the odd thing was the top five in the race entering the stage ended up the top five on the stage. So it was the same guys, and almost the same order. Nathan Haas won the stage. He was second overall. But then the same guys, and I had Van Hemlin in fourth entering. He finished fourth. And then I had Osorio fifth overall entering. He finished fifth on the stage. And so that ended up the final standings as well. Nathan Haas stayed second overall. And yeah, that was, that was the final standings. So uh, interesting finish. Good finish, exciting finish, and same here. And we'll, though we weren't able to get a stage win today, we were, those guys were out of, out of energy just a little bit before the line. I didn't want Bolt to go into a full sprint yet, but lost the sport, lost the help we needed, and mostly just trying to make sure we didn't lose the overall as Dylan Toynes tried to attack early. And so we had to chase down pretty hard, and that uh, burnt a bit, en bit of energy and ruined our sprint ultimately but we did just enough to still be a part of it and get two guys into the top five on the stage but Conchi takes the win overall Veldeman takes fourth overall and Vervecki hangs on for tenth overall Veldeman won the sprint jersey Conchi third in the mountains Conchi wins the under 25 Veldeman takes second there and we win the team a competition so really good series of results there and one we could be very proud of. Now, on to the final results here of where we're at at this point in the season here. Now, mid-August, quick step still looking like the strongest team for next season. We have slipped from 22nd to 26th. Uh, we're still looking pretty secure in the Continental Pro rankings as it's a long way down to 45th. And a lot of signings are done now, a lot of big names. At some point, I'll check in on seeing who's left but for now. Uh, we'll just wrap up with team standings, 3,300 points now in Continental, and up to 16th overall at 32.52. That is phenomenal. And in terms of the gaming decathlon, we picked up, well, in the game, we picked up another 600 points in, in that stage. But that's 325 for the gaming decathlon. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.